The first person to create really accurate drawings of the human body was the Renaissance genius Leonardo da Vinci. But he never published. So, well into the 16th century, doctors still relied for their understanding of anatomy on crude drawings done 1,300 years before. It would take a Flemish dwarf called Andreas Vesalius to change that. Picture the scene. It's 1536, a criminal has been hung and left a rot on the gibbet. One evening, along comes Vesalius. He is a 22-year-old medical student. He looks up at the corpse with longing. Body snatching is illegal, but that does not deter him. Vesalius jumps up, grabs the bottom of the legs and pulls. With a terrible ripping sound, they come off in his hands. He runs away into the night, clutching them in his arms. What Vesalius was doing was extraordinarily dangerous. Not only was he risking jail and personal ruin, he was challenging long-established ideas. At Vesalius' medical school, there was just one set of anatomical textbooks, written by Claudius Galen. Not only had they been written 1,300 years before, but they were also largely based on animals, like pigs and apes. At human dissections, Galen's words would be read out, while unquestioning students looked on from a distance. Aged just 22, Vesalius decided to do something that would have outraged and disgusted his contemporaries, dissect and examine a human body himself. Undeterred by the rotting human flesh on his kitchen table, Vesalius now began to strip the corpse down to its bare bones. He treats it rather like making beef stock. First of all, he gets a big pan of water and he sets it to boil. Then he gets the bits of his corpse and removes as much skin and flesh as he can. And he drops those bits into the pan. He boils away for hours until the whole thing falls apart. You wonder what the neighbors must have thought. Vesalius' own choice to be like this represents a quite extraordinary excitement in the pleasure of dead. And he's drawn to it, and he insists on living with it and surrounding himself with it uh, in a way that is actually, I think, quite spooky. Now, Vesalius had set himself one hell of a task. There are 206 bones in the human body, and when I was a medical student, I could name pretty well each and every one of them. These days, I think I'd struggle Bone by bone, he painstakingly tried to identify every single part of the human skeleton and put the jigsaw back together again. Uh, this is clearly a femur, but what this is, I couldn't begin to tell you. For well, Vesalius, though, this was just the start. He now wanted to map every organ, every ligament, every muscle in the human body. He was determined to understand how the whole thing fitted together. To do this, he needed more bodies. So naturally, he stole them. In fact, he stole them from the same place that all these bodies came from, the cemeteries of Paris. I'm here in Oxford to see what Vesalius risked so much to get his hands on. A dead body. People are still, understandably, very sensitive about showing human dissections. We were fortunate to get special permission to film. 
Dr. Alice Roberts teaches anatomy to surgeons. She's dissected many bodies. Hello, Alice. Oh, hello. Hello. You're about to start. Yes, yeah, just about to open up the abdomen. Do we, uh, for you. No, perhaps not. <laughs> this woman donated her body because she wanted to help students learn anatomy. To prevent decay, she's been preserved in embalming fluid, a luxury Vesalius did not have. I shall then prepare myself. I'm going to. So you did dissection yourself? At... I did. I haven't seen a human body in this state since I was at medical school, since it I was is, doing anatomy. It is bizarre, isn't it? It is, it is. strange. It's a bit of a yeah. shock, actually. You can see that the tissue's quite stiff. We're now doing what Vesalius did and others did not do. Examine a body for ourselves. It's strange to think of him obsessively chopping away in a dark basement. I'm just starting to see some guts in there now. The descending colon there, and then eventually that's going to go down to the pelvis and turn into the rectum. And what was it that Vesalius was challenging? The work of Claudius Galen. I'd got here a modern copy of the book that dominated Western medicine for so very long. What Galen says about the kidney, which I think you're coming to, it is proper to understand the usefulness of the way in which the kidneys are placed. That is the reason mm. why the right one is higher up and attached to the liver itself and the left one is lower than the right. No. No. <laughs> no, there's the, there's the lower pole, the yep. bottom of the left kidney just there, yep. and there's the lower pole of the right kidney. OK, so it gets completely wrong. Is this body wrong or is the book wrong? And the answer is? And the answer is, this can't be wrong. Yeah. Because this is real, this is real. You know, this is, this is actual anatomy. The location of the kidneys is just one of Galen's many glaring errors. But what I'm surprised by isn't so much that Galen got it wrong, but he went unchallenged for so long. Until Vesalius. When Vesalius announced that much of what the great god Galen had written was incorrect, and that 1,300 years of medical teaching was seriously flawed, he became extremely unpopular. Some dismissed him as a madman. Others who actually chose to look wondered if perhaps the human body had changed since Galen's time. In all, Andreas Vesalius corrected over 200 of Galen's mistakes. And in 1543, he published his masterpiece, De Humani Corporis Fabrica, on the fabric of the human body. Vesalius correctly identified the location of all the major organs, nerves and muscles in the human body. Finally, after 1,300 years of stagnation, anatomy and therefore surgery had taken a giant leap forward. Andreas Vesalius began the proper study of human anatomy. Others like William Harvey would later build on that. Anatomy remains at the heart of medicine.